Hi everyone, welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. Today I'm going to be making a growth chart. This is a six foot tall growth chart that I'm going to be making. I'm going to be using the easel software on the X-Carve and we're going to be using a process known as tiling. Let me show you how I did it. To make my six foot long growth chart, this is what it actually looks like. This white area is the maximum cutting area that I have for my uh, CNC. And you can see that the board is, would be much, much longer. So let me show you how we break it down into the pieces. First thing we do, we create the work pieces and we do it in two foot sections where my XY point is right down here at the bottom. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that you can see this. And that would be the first section that I would carve. And then from there, I would move to the next section. And same thing, the XY zero point would be right on the two to allow me to carve the next two foot section. It's usually in this section where I put in watch it grow or use anything that you would like. And then I use the next work piece to be able to create the last section, the five and the six. And it would be in this section that I would put in any names that the parents would like to have but would go into this area. With all three sections completed, I just bring up my first work piece and then from there I know where my XY point is going to be and from there I'll set up the machine and make the first carve cutting the one and the two. And then I repeat that process going through the other two work pieces and in essence it's three separate projects that I'm doing or you could call it three separate carves that I'm doing to create this one growth chart. To begin the carve, the XY zero position is the bottom left hand corner of the board. And I'm carving this for two feet and then I release the clamps and then I will slide the board straight through two feet down and create a new XY zero point. This shows the board repositioned with my new XY zero point exactly where it needs to be to start the next carve. And I slide the board directly to my XY point so I don't actually have to reset that in the computer. The router is sitting exactly at the XY point for my new position to carve the next two feet of the board. And in this that way I can maintain exactly where the tiling operation will take place from one two foot section to the next two foot section and that will create the accuracy that I need. In this second two foot section where I'm carving my three foot and four foot this is the middle of the sign and this is where I'm also carving out the watch us grow section. Of course you can use your own imagination and create any logo or saying that you want to put into this section. I chose to put Watch Us Grow and it works real well. The kids like it. And after all, that is the most important thing, that the kids like it and enjoy measuring their height. Then once the middle section is done, I repeat the process, slide the board down again, and reestablish my new XY zero point right on the four. So now I can carve the five and the six. This is a section where if the parents wish I can add the kids names to it. With the board as long as it is I do need to have the additional support 
for the board. This is the sealer that I use. It's a slack clear gloss coat and that will help seal the wood. After the sealer dried overnight, I went out and sprayed the flat black paint this morning and I let it dry good. And now what I'm going to be doing is sanding this off and leaving just the finish that I want. To be able to sand this, what I'm going to be doing is using the disc sander and I'm starting off with the 80 grit paper then I'll finish up with the 220. The sanding process is never fun to watch. I'm just doing this real quick for you. But it does reveal a very nice finish as it moves along. At the end, when I grab the vacuum and start vacuuming all of the sawdust off, it reveals a beautiful sign underneath. And the interesting part too is that the vacuum doesn't pick up all the dust. You still have to go through with the air compressor and blow off that fine little dust that sticks in between pretty much everywhere. For this project, I'm using the Rust Oleum Clear Gloss as the finish. I always take the project outdoors to be able to spray whenever possible. And here I'm putting the first coat on and I'm going to spray it on all the edges and on the course on the surface. I'll let this dry, sand in between the coats, and I'll put two to three coats of this clear gloss finish on the project. The nice thing about this finish, it does dry quite quickly and it leaves a very shiny, clear, hard protective finish that will last years to come. You notice as I'm spraying the growth chart, I'm catching it from all different angles. And the reason being, I want to be able to make sure that the finish gets into all of the grooves and around all the letters completely without missing anything. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.